We're back on the Riviera for the 2019 Poker Stars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT. Hello once again. Day three of the main event continues with 57 players remaining. And we're halfway through the day. Three levels down, three to go. I mean, this is the day when we try and get down to the final 24, maybe the final three tables, ideally the final two tables. Don't think that's going to happen. Maybe 32 is our best hope. And these are the seven players we're watching right now at our feature table. We've got a former EPT chap in Remy Castagnon, one of the high roller regs, Timothy Adams. Fatima Maria DeMelo is the last remaining member of Team Pro. She's on the shortish side, but not as short as Christoph Panetti. He's the table short stack, and he is in the danger zone. Danger zone! I am James Hartigan. He is Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And the next level is 5K, 10K with a 10K big blind ante. Timothy Adams opening with King Jack. And it's Remy Castagnon, who has ace eight in the big blind. Joe, Castagnon always stands out on my mind because that Deauville event in 2013, that was the first time that we ever covered every single day of an EPT. We covered it from the first hand of day 1A all the way through to the conclusion. Seven consecutive days of coverage, and it was just you and me, bro. I remember day one was a bit of a grind. Day ones, I should say. It was the final table with Special Agent Frank Calfond, <laughs> Glenn Simbaluk, the Canadian cowboy, Jeffrey Hakim, Walid Buhabib. It was a big table yeah, for Lebanon. Lebanese. Contingent. Just missing out on a seat at the final table. Asnar of the Hill People. Asnar. I knew there was one other. One other story there. Adams hits his jack on the turn and takes the lead in this hand. Fenton, are you back with us? Yeah, I, did. I just didn't want to interrupt this hand. That's one of the best clips that I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so Adams fires again, this time legitimately 85,000. Such a good feeling. Fire, get there, fire again. It's nice. Castagnon calls again. So a pot of 265,000. And a deuce on the river. Nice, safe deuce. Let's complete the backdoor flush draw. Makes it a little bit less appealing for the eight to call if we see a big bet. But I do think Adams is going to want to look for value still. How big do you think he'll make it, Vincent? Pretty big. I guess he might be a little bit concerned that his opponent could be slow playing a five, but these days most people, especially when you're this deep, are going to check raise on eight five five with a five, look to play for stacks. So I think he can be pretty confident that he has the best hand. So maybe like 150, 160. What's that? What are those worth? What is that? That is a time bank card wow. that buys you 30 seconds additional thinking time. Remember, the shot clock came into play at the start of day three, and the rest of the main event will play with the shot clock. 30 seconds per decision. It would be cool if it was a mystery bet. You just write a number on it and then slide it in. I'm going to write a number down and slide it across the table. All I would say, Joe, is over the years, you've had many ideas for innovations in poker. None of them have come to fruition yet. You need to start... Oh, wow, Adam's decided to check behind. All of them have been ideas. Yeah, but I'm saying you need to probably push them forward, write them down, get them in front of the people who can make things happen. I'm going to go work on that. I'll see you guys later. Okay. You, I would. 
an action hand between Julian Martini and Nicola Schwiti. We join the action on the flop. 9-4, deuce, rainbow. Schwiti has bet 59,000. Julian Martini calls. Turn card is the six of hearts. Board gets straight here, puts a flush draw out there. Action is on Shuiti. Main event champion here in Monte Carlo back in 2010. The last remaining former Monte Carlo winner. And he shoves on Martini. It's all into call. Six four deuce with two hearts and having bet big on the flop, Sweetie is now bet enough to put Martini all in. Decision for his main event life, and he's already used one time bank card. <laughs> and he calls. Martini tables 9-7 for top pair, but that looks like pocket jacks. Sweetie with the overpair, and he rivers another jack to eliminate Julian Martini. The PSPC runner-up busts in 52nd place, cashing out for 14,800 euros. And Nicola Schwiti is going to have a stack of around 1.5 million. We believe that Schwiti is now second in chips overall. Absolute monster pot. So the raise from Tim Adams, a call from Zaitun, Panetti with 6 5 suited, and an intense stare. Queen 10, 9 flop. Top pair for Tim Adams. The flush draw for Panetti. I think Adams might be somewhat tempted to check here. He's got to feel there's every chance his opponents have connected with this board pretty well. We can see that he's in front and could do with a protection bet, but I do like to check. Everyone checks the flop. Queen on the turn. Trips for Tim Adams. Now an 83% favorite in this four-way pot. I think at this point, Adams might want to start betting. I don't think he's going to go huge, but I could be wrong. It's still very possible that one of his opponents has a better queen than him. But at this point, obviously, pretty unlikely. The 
Tim has bet 35,000 into a pot of 102,000. I don't think Zaytun is going to actually do anything here with multiple players behind. Zaytun folds his ace high. Panetti, on the other hand, with the club draw. The problem for Panetti calling out of position here is that he's always going to be behind for starters. He's got six high, no showdown value. And if he does make his flush on the river, it's going to be very hard to get paid if he just then leads. And from time to time, it's not impossible that he's drawing dead right now. Adams could have possibly checked with queen 10, pocket nines, pocket tens on the flop. Doesn't look like he wants to fold though. Getting a pretty good price if his cards are live, which we can see that they are. There's the call from Panetti. And a fold from Mikel. Heads up to the river. 172k in the pot. And it's a break. This is where Panetti gets frisky and blasts off. Bluff Those shove. It wasn't this event last year that we saw the greatest bluff of all time with the 7-2 off. This would be right up there. It won't work though, I don't think. Oh, God, oh, he's wow. done it. Oh, Christoph Panetta, you've been so patient. But based on his table image, is Tim Adams staring at this board thinking, a trip's no good? I mean, it's so rare that you see someone check call out of position with the six high flush draw and then just decide to lead on the most bricky looking card of all time. Oh, man, it's... It's not the most fun spot to have to call with Queen Six, but I think he will end up calling. Tim Adams is as confused as we are. Panetti looks pretty calm. It's just so rare that anyone ever bluffs like this. I could understand if Adams does make the fold. Panetti is never shoving a worse hand for value. So he's just got to try and work out if he can have any bluffs right now. And usually I'd say probably not even. It's just such a weird line to take though. Arguably the tightest guy at the table. It's amazing. Every combo going to said, no, he can't have that. No, he wouldn't have that. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. We get time banks tomorrow or later yeah. today? Five. Five Are these two so far? I think Adams is going to end up using all of his time banks here. I think the longer he thinks, he might actually make this fold. Panetti channeling Mosquito. his inner gore guy. Doing here? Another shake of the head. I think he's going to fold. Oh! Wow. Folds the trip queens. Thing is that Panetti's played so That's snug that if he's shoving this river, he must have it. Be a good show it. I followed a really good hand. Panetti is not going to show the bluff. He's wow. going to rake in that pot. And Panetti no, okay. chips up to a 36 yeah, big blind stack. Yeah, Tim Adams playing 95 bigs. Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, 
As we go to the outer tables and check in on Malika Razavi, who was on our feature table earlier, in a hand against Ryan Reese. In fact, she has moved all in on the turn. It's a shove for 187,000 on a 5-4-3-3 board. So the dealer confirming the size of the all-in. 187, and decision now on Ryan Reese. 2013 World Series of Poker main event champ. And Ryan Reese makes the call. Razavi tables 6-7. That's a straight, an overpair to the board for Ryan Reese. And the queen on the river doesn't change anything. Wow. She had the flush draw as well. Malika Razavi will double up through Ryan Reese. She'll now have a stack of over 600K. Adams opening the 8-6 of spades and Zaitun deciding to put a little bit of pressure on with ace-5 off. Has made it reasonably small. Adams might be somewhat tempted to see a flop here. Off to the streets we go. Flop is king, seven, five. So the pair for Zaitun, bottom pair, and the open-ended straight draw for Tim Adams, who actually is the statistical favorite, even though he currently doesn't have the best hand. We know Adams is never going to be folding when he has the open end of straight draw. Tim, no check raise. Turn card is the queen of diamonds, and now Zaitun becomes a two to one favorite with his pair of fives. I think it's a turn he's got to be very concerned about, though. Adam's going to have a lot of flushes. He's never just going to fold a king to another bet. He's also going to call hands like 8s, 9s, 10s, etc. with a diamond if he bets here. So not a spot he wants to triple, so I like the check. I think Adams probably has to bluff this river card. We have seen Zaitun make one big hero call earlier on with the ace-9. Not a man who likes to give up pots easily. I really like the size from Adams because he obviously can bet all of his kings for this size. Maybe if he had a hand like ace-queen, he might want to bet this size. And even if he wants to target the weaker hands to call with his flushes, he might occasionally go small. So I like the size and 
be interesting to see if Zytoon can sniff it out. I'd probably find a fold myself. Wow, just doesn't like the fold. So Tim Adams gets bluffed off the best hand, tries to bluff, gets cold. Still playing a 75 big blind stack with 15 minutes to go until the extended break. Just completes. Yeah, pulled the trigger with the sevens. Only a few orbits to go. Will she pull the trigger with the king nine? She's got 19 okay. bigs. Oh, she falls into the trap and it's domination nation and the dominated player is at risk of elimination. The magic lamp versus. You don't know? You oh, know? what he is? Yeah. He is. Guan Yu? Guan Yu versus He's like he the magic lamp, the genius? I th yes, I think Aladdin. so. <laughs> yes, Asia versus. What is it? Middle East? Arab? So Fatima still looking for a nine. The last remaining member of Team Pro needs to get lucky. Okay. He needs an ace for the straight chop now, though. Drawing to a chop. Needs an ace on the river to survive. No. We lose no, really Fatima right? Maria really De Melo <laughs> in 44th place. You haven't missed anything this time, Fatima. Thank you. Thank you. She is gone, cashing out for 14,800 euros. And Aladdin Reskala has now moved up to nearly 1.2 million so in chips. Out of TV table. <laughs> and Fatima. I don't win the time. I know no, we're not meant to have favorites, but I hate to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about, uh, well, it's funny you mention that, guys, because we are actually going to be changing tables during the dinner break. We've got 11 minutes left on the level. Then we're going to take the 75-minute hiatus. When we come back to play the last two levels of the night, we are going to be bringing Patrick Antonius back to the main stage, along with Nicola Schwiti, the 2010 main event champ, who's the current chip leader, plus Limitless. So those three guys will be back on the main stage, along with their table mates, after the dinner break. Okay, Timothy Adams uh, is feeling happier now. He was a bit disappointed, but now he's happy. Given what we've seen from Zaytun, Adams is 100% check raising this board. And given what we've seen from Zaytun, I don't know if we're gonna see him fold this hand. This could be a monster pot. Both players with over 75 big blinds. They are second, sorry, second and fourth in chips at the table respectively. Given how deep we are, I won't be surprised to see him make it about 65, 70k. Zytoon bet 20,000. Tim Adams responded with a check raise. And Zytoon responded with a re-raise? I think we're just going to see Adams call here. But again, I don't know. 
So yeah, the check raise was to 61K. Zaytun has three bet with his over pair, 140K. 250. It's not just a flat call, Fenton. It's a four bet. Much of blame. So everyone at the table now knows that hand history. Everyone now realizes that Tim Adams got bluffed. They know that he's only just found that out. Zaytun might be thinking he's tilting. There's extra layers to this hand. Wow, he pulls the trigger. Adams is going to call, and Zaytun's going to get the terrible news. How ridiculously huge is this pot? There's 1.5 million in the middle. Adams, the player at risk, but he is a 9-1 to one favorite. And surely this is going to give him the chip lead. And should Zaytun lose this, if he doesn't improve, he's going to be left with just 87k. Fewer than nine big blinds. Ten on the turn. And Johan Zaytun drawing to two outs, needing a queen on the river. It's a deuce. So Tim Adams gets a huge double up. The biggest pot we've seen so far. Tim Adams playing 1.5 million, more than 150 big blinds. And Johan Zaytun on life support. Pretty sure Adams is not gonna mind the fact that he just seen that he was bluffed in that relatively small pot compared to this one. 1.5 million chips, 150 big blinds, 43 left. He is going to be a player that nobody wants to have on their table now. Okay, so this is... Uh, oh, this is... Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, one, five, six, seven, seven, forty-five, seven, forty-seven. Yeah, yeah. We resume with Nicholas Schwiti atop the leaderboard. The 2010 main event champ is the current chip leader with more than 1.7 million followed by EPT Prague 2018 winner Paul Michaelis and Tim Adams, who we saw in action during the last level of play. Christoph Vogelsang also in the top five. Start of day chip leader Victor Malinowski and Sam Greenwood in the top 10. 42 players remaining in total, and these are the six who are going to be sat at our feature table up on the main stage. We've got the chip leader. Chip leader, rather, Nicholas <laughs> Schwiti. We've got Limitless back on the main stage. We've got Antonius, Antonius, as Patrick brings his 62 big blind stack into action. James Romero, the guy who burst the bubble last night, is the shortest stack at the table with 29 bigs. Blinds are now 6,000, 12,000 with a 12K ante. With 42 players remaining, they're just making sure that all the remaining tables are balanced before we get cards in the air once again. Jordan Verbracken, ace eight suited, makes it 24,000. And Malinowski's called out of the small blind with suited Broadway, king 10 of diamonds. And bingo, bango, bongo, top two pair. Interesting to see whether he wants to raise, attempt to get it in now, or if he just wants to call versus his opponent to open an early position. I think probably without a flush draw on the board, he has to call. His opponent has the pocket kings, the pocket tens, the ace king. He doesn't have any of them, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be raising this board yet. Give your opponent the opportunity, maybe fire it off with an ace jack or an ace queen as well. And on this card, you might be tempted to go for it. His opponent is going to have a lot of hands like king queen, 
Queen's hand suited. So we might slow down. He is going for it. Yeah, he sure is. I mean, look, he's uh, he's got outs. Two of them, by the looks of things. I do feel it will be close to impossible for him to bluff the river now. Not impossible. That's a that's a very strong statement. But given the size that he's bet, if his opponent then calls the turn, we're going to see a pot of 460k on the river. And he will only have about half pot to shove. Maybe he can make some hands like 10 9 of clubs, jack 10 of clubs, oh. something like this fold on the river. But it's, it starts to look like your opponent has a king at least more often than not. When you just call here, Fenton, are there any rivers you're going to fold on except for maybe a jack? Well, point's kind of moot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a jack's going to be pretty bad. The nine of clubs, of course, something like this, but... On ace... all, all safe rivers, though, are you just committed yeah, to Yeah, yeah, 100%. You never change your read? No, I don't think so, given that it's for half pot. You don't have to be having the best hand that often. Obviously, it's a little bit different because we're 40 left in an EPT. Right. Could... And you were right, Verbracken does not... Bluff River. I always feel kind of guilty, like kind of stupid when I check a huge hand and they check behind and I'm like, ha ha, I tried to get you. <laughs> With Malika Razavi. Raise arm. Razavi moving all in over a bet of 80,000 from Remy Castillon. Three cards. That's a flop we've got out there. Six, five, ten. No flush draw. champ Remy casting on put to the test for all of his chips it appears he is 250k behind after that bet of 80,000 and she has got more than that he does not want to fold it looks like but he does pushes his cards forward reluctantly Show it, it's good for the game. Ace four. That could wow. have been the best hand. That could have been the best hand. She has been very impressive. Snap calling when she has the best hand, bluffing out other hands. Malika Razavi, we have not seen much of you on this tour. I would remember, but I am enjoying it. So that woman should never trust the man. Oh boy, here we go. In a game of poker only. All right, kids. Elanovsky raising the button. King Jack. Patrick wants to take a peek with Ace Nine in the small blind. Vaskaboynikov. Thirteen thousand to win seventy-four thousand. Speaking of snacks, that's pretty tasty pot odds. Well, both players on either side of Patrick are involved in this hand, so Mama, Mam Mamut wants to know, isn't the guy sitting to his right, Lionel Messi? I'm not a Terrible soccer, show. I'm not a soccer guy, Fenton. Do either of those guys look like Lionel Messi? It's the worst shout I've ever heard, and I love a look-alike. Be interesting to see if Patrick wants to bet his hand here. 
Looks like he will. And that's why you call with Ace-9. Pop Red says, kind of same beard and hairstyle as Messi, but not really. Do you agree with that? Mm. Not really. Still no. I mean, definitely not the hair. Maybe the beard slightly. But he has a ginger beard, so. Melanovsky, a.k.a. Lionel Messi, calls the bet from Antonius. I was going to say, does this go check, check sometimes here now? Yes, it does. Patrick, a little worried about his kicker. A little worried about that spade. Malinowski figures he can't bet for value either. Can't fold out better. It goes check, check. Patrick Antonius up to nearly 850,000. Third in chips at this table, which is not as bad as it sounds. 70 big blinds, pretty good. Christoph Panetti though, AKA season two of The Wire. He is out of here. Sabatka. Sadganka. At the hands of Malika Razavi? Yeah. Looks like it. Seems like she was counting chips. When you see these big tournaments online as well, you certainly see a slowdown when you get to the money, you know, when uh, money starts to get involved. But you don't have that sort of mental, like, I just flew out to Monte Carlo and uh, I can't wait. You know, I want to try and go as deep as I can. And it's getting to the end, end of day three and I would love to make day four. It's like it's like a kind of a semi bubble, isn't it? You know, just like a, a day bubble to uh, try and sneak into that next day of action. So we got Patrick in action here. He raised the button with King 10 and Romero called with Jack Deuce and Ooh. has just turned a straight. Antonius with two pair. Antonius covered by Romero. You were asking for meaty post-flop play. Yeah, this is not the scenario I'd necessarily dreamed up. But from <laughs> Patrick's perspective, Nick, I mean, there's a lot of Broadway combos in Romero's yep. hand when he calls absolutely. out of the big blind. So yep. he's got to be suspicious about this. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think this is the kind of uh, texture where he's going to lose a ton of money just because he has the two pair, obviously, any jack there. And as you say, there are so many combinations with the jack that uh, are completing the nut straight there. Doesn't mean Patrick will fold to this turn. Right. <laughs> yeah. He might not lose right. everything, but he's going to lose something. This is Patrick. The king is coming every time. Oh, you reckon? I'll take a 10. <laughs> Nick's got the king. Joe Ooh. had the 10. In fact, it's an 8. That would have been some movie magic if it came the king, wouldn't it? So 324,000 in the middle. Romero, the effective stack with 630k behind. Whoa, he's gone nearly full pot, 300,000. Okay, Patrick, make your decision in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this bet size. I think um, if you want to try and make it look bluff heavy, that's exactly the size you're going to go for. Whoa. Big gulp from Patrick Antonius. <laughs> sweating that clock, sweating this bet, sweating Romero. Patrick 
makes this call. He's down to 15 big blinds. Playing time bank cards. Gets additional thinking time. one from the guy next to you, you don't mind. <laughs> I will say that while 30 uninterrupted seconds is a lot of time to make a decision, 30 seconds while also thinking about how you're on the clock. <laughs> I was just thinking that. It does count for a little bit less. Yeah, I mean, and it does it does interrupt your thought process if you have to ask, do I have another time bank as well? Um, well you're the, not exactly. In the dying seconds there, Patrick made the call and just lost another 300K in that pot. Wow. And so Patrick will be left with a 15 big blind stack. James Romero up to 1.2 million. Meanwhile, Jordan Verbrucken is being moved off the feature table because we have to keep all the tables balanced. Is it possible that a table out in the field got verbroken? No, I just think there's a table with too few players. And then there may have been an elimination. I think we may be down to 38. We'll just check in on that in a moment. So Schwiti opens to 35K. Malinowski calls and Patrick has shoved with King nine. Action back uh, on Sweetie. The original Razor folds. What's Malinowski going to do? Phew. Had, had a bear. Stay alive. And he folds as well. <laughs> it was three, three, uh, yeah, I mean, three, after there's a flat three, 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 in front of him, I feel like that's a really cool spot to put in a squeeze with uh, I believe. some middling cards. Yeah. Nobody I mean, wants he, to he knows the initial raise yeah. is going to be... Uh, it's going to be quite loose. To stay here on the, on the future table. <laughs> <laughs> there is no one to replace you. Two empty shares there. He's the only one trying. <laughs> James is ruthless. Man, Patrick Warrior. really got an in for you. Who is he actually talking about? Oh, James Romero. <laughs> he doesn't look like a James, can that's never, why. Can never root against a guy who has, you know, hard to play. You earn a lot of fans today, I think. <laughs> Queens for Luis Medina. See the little shuffle did there? I was already a fan. Funky cold don't Medina. Bound. 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 Well, since I've been watching, he's been pretty uh, quiet on this table so far. He almost played Ace Queen, Nick. Oh. Almost. Patrick with ace 10. Little boy. Little boy. Patrick with 22 bigs. Maybe two. Hmm? No. He shoves. I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say maybe too many big blinds. To no, no, no. I was definitely not going to say that. He's ripping it. No, seems, seems perfectly reasonable. Makes the call. So here we go, Patrick looking for an ace. Oh, we are going to lose. Last year's finalist, the EPT Barden 2005 champion. And all round legend and poker end boss. Ooh, that four looked like an ace there for a sec, as they, as they tend to do. Once the ace almost comes, it then doesn't come though. That's the problem. Three or five for a sweat. I'll Ooh. take it. All right. And Patrick will take it as well. Looking for an ace or a three on the river to survive. Nope. 
Okay. Nice playing with you. Hand. You too. Thank Patrick you. Antonius eliminated in 35th place. Good game. Cash is for 17,310 euros. But another deep run for Patrick in back-to-back -back years yes. in this event. There is going to be a run on chicken breast tonight. 34 spots away. No spoilers, please, Joe. <laughs> and I think we're getting a new player at the table. Straight off the NASCAR circuit. Which, uh, where are you going, which airline? Okay. Oh, Massimo Maseli. Patrick departs. Exits stage right. And coming in stage left is Massimo from Italy. While we have lost Ariel Salastino in 33rd place. Eliminated by Malika Razavi. He got it in with Kings against Ace Jack. Oh, man. The chips went in on a jack high flop, and there was a jack on the river. So Celestino is out. And Malika Razavi is now playing a stack of 1.8 million. Near enough, 100 big blinds. Thank you. Massimo Masela's on the button. I like it. I know nobody folds their buttons. I think sometimes you can fold your button, especially when the two biggest stacks in the tournament and fantastic players are sitting to your direct left. Let them duke it out. Okay, and this is blind on blind. This is where I predict we are going to see some craziness. Look at this. Adam's getting wild by completing with King-5. Sweetie with ace-queen. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident Adam's line here is limp call with king five of spades. Anything up to like 3x pre. Seems like a really standard blind on blind play to play this mixed strategy with these nice um, sort of suited high low hands. As in high card, low card, not high low, like we're playing high low. Right. <laughs> Uh, declaration game. Adams does call, so we've got nearly 100k in the middle already. That was a dull flop. It seems like yeah. this for, for King Five, though, it feels like you hit this flop. As soon as the Deuce of Spades came, I, was, I thought for sure we were going to see a Three of Spades, but uh, interesting to see how they play this. I feel like King-5 can float a C-bet here quite frequently because you can actually rep straights on later streets pretty effectively that you would limb call with pre-flop. Also, King-high can still be the best hand blind on blind very often. Well, I think Adams may have hit the board finally. And I think he's going to put in a sizable bet here. He knows that he doesn't want to give a random ace an opportunity to Catch uh, that fill three up that straight. That catch that three ball or any over cards as well. So I think something like half pot here makes a lot of sense. Um, if he's checking flop, it's not like a turn that he's going to turn ace queen into a bluff with now anyway, or ace king or ace jack. He's just going to carry on checking if he doesn't want to see bet the flop. He bets approximately. If he if he bet half if he bets half pot here, everyone owes me fifty bucks in chat. Uh, it's significantly more than half pot. 125 uh, okay. into 148. All right, I guess I owe everybody 50 bucks now. <laughs> How many people in the chat? Okay, take it back. We've got nearly 200. Yep. Re I love the sizing here. Um, I think ace queen is definitely going to call here a bunch. All the ace, ace highs, not specifically just ace queen. Oh, oh no. You can't stop it. You just you can't fight the river. I think Adams pretty much knows where he's where he's at in this situation, though. Um, it's whether or not he wants to try and rep a three, which is a very tall order. Um, although he did limp call, so having that mixed strategy does give you a little bit of an edge in these situations.
Does that just go check check? Yep. Well, Adam's got off easy. I mean, if, if his read on the turn is that ace queen is still the best hand, then I think by betting the river, he's only serving to get trapped by like a random three. And there are plenty of threes in a limp calls uh, small blind versus big blind as well. There are some in there. Come on, Evie, let's go. She's got 15 bigs. And she's got pocket sevens. I think this has got to be going in. Don't look too uncomfortable for too long. GL all in player. Is anyone gonna wake up with a hand? Not Nine deuce isn't gonna do it? Nope. He's what I'm worried about. Oh, why are you asking go. for a count? Come on. Yeah, ace queen is is gonna be a call here, 100. percent What amount is a fold? Uh, good question. Um, 18 big blinds plus potentially. I mean, that's not even a fold, really, theoretically. Uh, I guess he might be making some adjustments for the player though, which is why he's asking for the count if he perceives her to be on the tighter side. But I don't think you can ever get away from Ace Queen here. If we do go off to the races here, I hope we've got Andre Latau on standby. Here we go. Exactly calls. <laughs> I Make enjoy sure the seven attempts to get it on <laughs> the stream. <laughs> seven. Prepare that, prepare that death by quads, please. Just ahead of time, guys. Well, James. Like piles versus heaps, one of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Let's flip the coin. It is Evie Vidvi, the Norwegian qualifier who's at risk here. She currently has the best hand with sevens. Sweetie's been running pretty hot today, though. Which means he's due to lose a flip. The flop is king, nine, four. Sevens holding. Six cards. Evie has to fade. A couple more now. A couple more. Aces, queens, and jacks all working for Shweetie. It wasn't like that tenth against this queen before. It's ten, ten. Oh. King on the river means sevens hold. Did you see that reaction? <laughs> Look at the exhale. Oh, wow. I've never seen anyone so relieved. Let's have a look at the stacks of all the players who we've been watching on the main stage. At this point, let's thank Nick Walsh for his time this evening. Nick, you'll be back with us tomorrow for the last level of the day, I believe. Absolutely, and hopefully Saturday as well, I believe. So, yeah, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for having me. Not at all, Nick. Thank you very much for your help getting us through this very long day. And it's going to be another long one tomorrow. 12 hours of coverage expected here on PokerStars TV as we do play down to the final table. We're back tomorrow. Thanks for your company today from the whole team, from Joe Stapleton and me, James Hartigan. It's good night from Monte Carlo. Joe.